looking at buying the new Weber ET3, then this could be the video for you. And don't forget everything you use in the video today. There are links in the description below for the best place to get those barbecue products. Make sure you check those out at the end of this video. Hi Weber fans, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who've just bought the Weber Baby Q1200N or the Q1000, the Weber rotisserie is finally out. So let's jump in, get this unboxed, see what you get in there, how easy it is to fit, and then we'll compare the quality against the old one. So let's dive straight into it. Now this is for the third generation Weber Q, which is the Q1000N or 1200N. If you want the Q1200 or the 1000 model, which is the previous version, there will be a link to that video at the end of this one. So in the box, it should contain the rotisserie rod, two rotisserie forks, the rotisserie housing, the motor, and the motor mount. So it does come with an instruction book uh, on how to assemble it. I'm gonna show you how to assemble it anyway, but the tools you will need are basically a 7 16th spanner and a Phillips screwdriver. All right, so in here we've got our motor. So that's our rotisserie motor. We've got the main front unit here. So we've got a heat shield as well, which goes on the handles. And we've got our main ATA casing, which extends the queue. So including instructions as the six, so you should get your instruction book, your rotisserie bar, your rotisserie shield, your heat shield that goes on your handle, your motor, and then in here we should have our two forks and any other bolts and attachments to assemble this. So looking at the shroud, it looks like it's the same sort of design as on the earlier Q. We've got these folded hinges. I wasn't a fan of those on the original one, but I do find if you drop it, you're gonna damage it and they will bend pretty easy if anything falls on them because you've got no bag to store it again. Where about, where's the bag? We've paid over $200 for this Australian and it should come with a bag or a storage bag with it for definite because you've got no way of storing it. Looks like it clips in the same on the grill. So we'll have these attachments here that clip it on the grill and our attachment for our rotisserie bracket will fit on here. So first up, you're gonna to wanna to find your bracket to fit on there and your bolt, which should be in this box here. Right from that box, we've got our bracket for our rotisserie, we've got our bolt. So for this, we're gonna need a 12 mil socket or 7 16th socket or spanner. So this does come with a protective plastic film, so you're gonna to wanna to remove that first before we attach this to the rotisserie. Well, so now we've assembled the rotisserie, let's see how easy it is to fit to the new Weber Q. Right, so our heat shield's gonna fit this way up. And all we're gonna do is remove the two Phillips screws from behind here between the spacer and the handle.
Right, so we've got both rotisserie systems set up. So let's jump in and have a look at the differences that Weber have made. Well, so looking at the original system, it was quite a snug fit with the shroud. As you jump across to the new one, now with the new system, it is a little bit raised here. So if you lift that, you can see there is a little bit of raised there. I think that's the weight of the actual motor. Once you've got your chicken on there or your roast, I think that will hold it down. Heat shield wise, because the Weber Q is now a bigger version, we've got the smaller shield on there. And on the newer version, it's quite a big shield. Now with the original heat shield, I didn't have any issues with that. Well, I have changed the design a little bit, but it does come out a little bit more extended on the new Weber Q version. Next up, looking at the rotisserie itself, on here, we've got no extension. This did used to get quite hot when I was using it, so I used to have to use oven gloves. Now looking at the new one, we've got the extension piece that screws on, so hopefully this disperses some of the heat and we can still hold this, but it does give you a little bit more to grip than the original version. Looking at the motor, it's a little bit smaller on the original version compared to that new Weber Q. Looking at this, we've got 240 volts and it's two and a half to three revolutions per minute. I'm not sure what the old version is. I'll have to time that. The bracket that holds the motor has been upgraded. As you see on the original versions, it's quite thin. And on the new Weber Q, we've got two splines here. So it is a bit of a, a lot more sturdier to hold that motor. This part here is square, so it will slide on. I did find that a little bit awkward to, to slide on at times, but it did work pretty well, and there's no movement in that. You have got two forks on either side compared to the new version, which is now built a lot sturdier. These are a lot stronger. That isn't a square hole. Just fit this on however you like, and then just tighten that nut there to hold it. You've got four meat hooks on either side as well, which is gonna make it easier to hold those roasts. So that should hold the meat a little bit sturdier. Now don't forget every cues of the video today. There are links in the description below for the best place to get those barbecue products. So make sure you check those out at the end of this video. So looking at the new Weber Q rotisserie, Weber have made some fantastic improvements. I do like the fact they have put that extension on the rotisserie itself. You've got those four extra meat spikes. That's going to make those roasts a lot more stable. We have got the bigger area being the new baby Q. So we're going to be able to get a lot bigger roasts on here. Now, the only negative I've got against this, and again, I've said this to Weber before, for that $200 price tag, you should be getting a bag to store it. So when you're using your rotisserie and you haven't got it in use, it would be nice to have a bag and you shouldn't have to buy that at an extra cost. It's probably the only negative I've got at the moment. I will be doing a follow-up video with some roasts on this rotisserie, see how good it is, and I'll give you a final review on my thoughts if it works any better than the old Weber Q1200 rotisserie. Q. Now, if you've got an older Q and you want to check out the rotisserie and my review on that, check out this video next. And if you want to look at my review of the new Weber Q trolley, check out this video next. So Thanks for watching, happy grilling, and I'll catch you next one.